brother Selfin was screaming. The noise, inhuman in its unseemliness, coming from the lips of one of the Emperor's chosen. A gut-wrenching melody of wailing distress that reverberated against every wall and eardrum in its burden descent down to the deepest levels of the facility. It, of course, was involuntary, coming from the former steward of the penitent eye. Though brief that stewardship had been, but given the screaming was a gifted assault to the ears of every prisoner in the Penn Station, it was proof that our enemies were stupid enough to continue our imprisonment. Brother Selfin, we all knew, was weeks dead now. What screamed now was a flesh puppet of the heretic traitors of the 17th. Lorgar's misguided sons. The arch-traitor's progenies were as foolish as he, spending the many months of our confinement preaching the words of false gods, promising what all fools promise, power, riches, glory, and ascension. As if the slaves of fickle gods could understand the fulfilling simplicity of duty in a galaxy of turmoil. Then again, this too is just another form of our interment, to be left to think and ponder under the backdrop of a brother's stricken voice. Brother Selfin wasn't screaming anymore. The sudden absence of his rasping pleas and outcries of pain and bartering set a grim pall over the facility that was absent of sound, but for the dripping plop of blood against the ferrocrete floor. My own blood. Scores of gashes and lash marks across my body drip-fed into a drain at the cell center. A plain cell. A plain jail. Albeit an Astartes one. They would choose at random their crier from among the populace of this prison, from among my brothers of the black chief among them. Three hundred of us there had been, six score of my remaining fingers there remains. Ah, I have four fingers, by the way. My handlers had been merciful to allow me one hand, my right hand but for the smallest digit. Brother Detrius was next. From the lower steps outside my cell I could hear his telltale thumping gait though it was interrupted by a limp from when a nasty traitor and terminator plate had kicked in his left leg. His panting came next. One, three, pause. One, two, drawn. Darkness. <coughs> Nothing. <coughs> Nonsensical sounds of a beaten dog to a lip flapper of the 17th. Numbers, and a signal to the progenies of Dorne. One in three are handlers in sight, one in two drawn, the twelve hundred levels of our prison. Darkness, and nothing. Not time. Not yet. It wasn't long. Some weeks before the resistant cries of Brother Detrius picked up where Brother Selfin had left off. On the fortieth day of Brother Detrius's crucifixion, a new cry was heard from the bottom of our dark prison. Light! Light everything! Light everything! Light everything! Light everything! Light everything! Light everything! Light! 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 Light everything. Light everything! I cried out into the void of my cell and the emptiness beyond. Light. A chance was made. Everything. This would require all we had, and more. The chains tying my limbs by the ankles and wrists were tough and cold. The bite of their metal was poison, inscribed with sigils of the old Cochesian indict. Their pull that of a castle's weight in stone, puppeting our lives from the ceiling's crisscrossing bands of thick beams. Now, they were the weight of our might. Demonic whispers and promises were silent from those clinking ties of damnation, as the faithful concert of our voices rose from the pits of our prison, both brothers in black and the motley number of chapter marines from across the sector. And then, far below, our champion began to sing. It took several pulls to free myself, and with luck, none more than allowed, as time was of the essence now. The chain's weight, usually infused with the strengthening spells of the seventeenth's witches, was nothing more than normal still now. With the champion's melody in my ears, I yanked and pulled my arms, then each leg free until I fell onto the bloody ground with a welling tide of hate and righteous duty filling my hearts. 
There was no doorway to prize free. As I stepped out onto the ascending stair, there came the brief bark of several bolters from above and below. Very brief. The battle cries of my brothers complimented our champion's voice into a killing furious mix that drove us into a frenzy. Though I shall preach the words of duty and discipline until the day I fall with a blade in hand, I will admit I took great joy in what happened next, for even a space marine can love their calling. The corrosive gaze of a red and high-crested helm of a word-bearer met my steely gaze from a few steps below. The bolter in his hand turned with inhuman speed, but my hands were faster, drawing the chains like a coil and whipping them toward the bastard traitor to snap the bolter aside for just a moment, a moment enough to close the distance in a following leap of blurring fists and scrabbling legs. This was a bastard traitor, but one who was armored. They may call my gene brothers bullheaded, but never stupid. From the legionary's waist, I pulled free a chaos-inscribed blade that hurt my eyes to look upon, but it did well out of sight when it was buried in the bastard's throat. Between his neck seals, I twisted its grip and spit a corrosive glob onto the open wound to burn out the flapping innards of meat and chunking bone. His bolter found its way into my hands with a slip as I let the body fall into that dark pit and disappear. Just as I was already turning to adjust and pick apart the traitors below me in a staccato of fire, first shot went wide. The second through the fourth, however, each found their mark against head and knee of every legionary I could see. Sergeant! Shouted a voice from above, and I flicked my gaze up to see Brother Harn from the stair level across, warning of something behind me, just as the shrill whine of a chain sword was brought to life on the downswing toward my neck. Reacting with a strain of unused muscles by just dropping back to my knees, I give the whining blade the skin of my procured bolter instead driving the weapon up and twisting its bite as I jump and wrap my thighs around the head of the silent traitor legionnaire. With a knock and pummeling hit of chain on helmet, I wrangle the trapped chainsword and bolter from his grasp and let them fall as he maddeningly attempts to dislodge me by throwing himself and me into the wall. With a crack, pinning me hard and swinging wildly at my exposed waist and fighting hands. It hurts. The bastard gives no room to breathe or maneuver as he suffocates me with his frame, a bruiser like few I'd ever known with his fist driving into my stomach and body as he tries to pry himself free. But I hold. I debated swinging myself off the edge with him in tow, but thought better of it as the battle cry of Brother Harn reaches me at the same time his body does. No pity! My battle brother cries as he tackles the traitor from behind, balancing the bastard's weight, but for the added baggage of a new pair of hands that rest the helmet from his suit. Primal fury brings that crested helm down to bash in the mutilated visage of a once angel of the emperor, with a squelch of flesh and thunderclap of bone. Brother Harn's relentless onslaught only stopping when the crested helm is caught in the neck of the split headcase. The juices and brain matter of the wordbearer decorate his hands as he rises and looks at me, nodding downward. I rise and my head with it as my gaze nods upward. Brother Harn nods twice in understanding before taking off down toward the fighting below as I take up the fallen chainsword and bolter before beginning my ascent. Freeing the corrupted blade with a quarter of its teeth now dull from the helmet was no easy task while sprinting up the flight of stairs. But as the champion's song hit its ebb and flow, the rhythm feels right as the sounds of battle ring in my ears, as above and below. With surety firm in my heart and faith singing, I step hand in hand with the drive of duty and the confidence of brotherhood toward the sounds of fighting above, growing louder and louder over the silencing death screams below. Just several minutes pass before I find my third legionnaire, freeing several malformed brothers of the Chapter of the Craven Tongue along the way, only for them to go and rescue their brothers deep below. The traitor legionnaire's back was to me as he wielded a pair of twin ancient power blades in a blur of movement and sword work that many men would have felt headache to see as he fought off two of my brothers who were battling him to a draw, with roaring chain blades alight, even with the high ground advantage. I was none so quiet as the dead traitor now below. In keeping with the spirit of Brother Harn, I came up behind the heretic with a rallying cry of both lungs and whining teeth. No remorse! The challenge was untenable to many a fighter caught in a pinch by several superhuman opponents. Yet the bastard had some fight in him. I'll say that, as he reacted instantly swiping his twin blades in a butterfly arc that caught the wrist from one of his opponents above and would have taken my own if it weren't already gone. An admirable attempt. 
but nonplussed the traitor legionnaire attempted to readjust only to find the screaming whine of three chain blades breaking his shell and a screeching crunch of adamantine teeth on studded ceramite. Blood spewed across our bodies as we found his guts beneath, eliciting a blood-curling roar from his helm before he was lost in the frenzy of thrusting blades and hacking motions that saw him bit-strewn and eviscerated beneath our feet. Afterwards, sucking the bloody bits of his heart from my lips made my skin crawl with disgust. The traitor had a funny taste to him. Spitting the glob of refuse onto the bastard scripted pauldrons, I motioned my brothers up and along. With a nod and thump of their fist upon my shoulders, they took off at a run, trailing a single line of red ichor. After a moment's pause to trade out my dual blade for the ancient twins with a quick joining snap, I followed behind. So it was, until we reached the landing, and there we met our match. Here, pined with the first of a series of dark layering walkways jutting from a high-towered panopticon, its surface riddled in the entrails and naked sacrifices of both mortal and immortal. There, we saw the challenge of green eyes upon us as our champion's song fell silent. They came at us in a heat, the bodies of dead transhuman kin and enemies alike on the deck beneath their feet, forgotten as quickly as their chain blades could cry, with their foul mantras whispering in our ears. The seventeenth were pack slaves, and their demonic allies were upon us from the shadows without warning or restraint. My two brothers disappeared from my sight in the pressing charge of etheric flesh. They did not scream or cry, only the ringing sounds of biting teeth as they engaged. A malformed horror of twisted limbs and saliva-wagging tongues dove towards my head, meeting the edge of my joined blade in a thrashing mortis cry of horror as it impaled itself. Whipping the monstrosity from my blade to a curve, I brought the edge up in an arc to parry the screaming blades of two legionnaires. The fight was lopsided with but a single hand to maneuver. So I took the initiative by giving my handless arm to the biting teeth of the first, as I parried and returned a counterthrust into the helm lens of the second, reaching deep into his brain. Oh, by the throne! The unholy pain of the chain blade as it devoured my forearm in a separating break of bone and flying flesh bits surged across my entire being. And so it was by the very blessed being of Rogel Dorn that I ripped myself from its wind and rolled across the armored traitor in an upward thrust of silver as the ancient blade broke the seals of his thigh and speared through one of his hearts. The cry of pain from the bastard was a beautiful reward for the loss of an arm as he swung at me again, wildly, only for me to take his hand in an instant of bloody silver as the twin of the blade was drawn and up in my hand. It was but a blink of an eye as I elbowed him aside with my butchered arm, ready and swiping to take apart a mouthy beasting of shadow and shrieking bones. I would declare myself as ready to face the despoiler himself in that moment, standing over the kills at my feet. But my head was ringing. By the malign nature of my foes? No. By the months of relentless torture? Nonsense. It was simply the wear of my flesh. Duty's end was coming. And with that surety my voice came honest and true, in a battle roar invigorated with the clarity and fervor of a Templar's fury. <coughs> my brothers both lay carved and barely alive among the beast things and traitors they had felled. If their gazes could kill, then I surely would have rested then, instead of positioning myself to face the traitors, thralls, and scurrying things emerging from the walls and walkways of the facility around me. Not as many as I would have thought, and possibly enough for me, if I'd had both hands and perhaps another dozen battle brothers. Yet my hearts did not waver. My faith was greater than ever, that this was the moment. One act amongst hundreds, raising my twin half-sword toward the throng of the damned. My last word was interrupted by the sallying shout of a champion from the stairs behind me. A hero at the head of a small host of brothers and vengeful heralds from across the stars, taking up one terrible cry. No fear!